What is up guys, Stark here. I am back for another Fate video, and in today's video, I am going to be doing the character spotlight for the brand new Firestar Saber, Benny Enma. So, Benny Enma isn't officially released as of this recording. Technically, she comes out tomorrow on the 1st of January, which will be the brand new year, and it'll kick off a year of a lot of really, really good servants, and Benny Enma is also in that category as well. She's a very good saver. Um, but I'm posting this video today as opposed to tomorrow because tomorrow is the 1st of January and I always post the calendar videos on the 1st of the month. So I'm doing the spotlight today and then the calendar video will be tomorrow. Um, of course this is all as of this recording so if you're watching it a bit late then that's kind of irrelevant. Um, but yeah we're going to do the character spotlight today and then we'll do the calendar video tomorrow and then I'll post my polls on the 2nd or the 3rd depending on when I actually get a chance to do those. So Benny Enma, as I said, is a saver, and she is, in my opinion, a really good character, and she's also a really unique character. She has two really unique skills that no other character in the game has, and that definitely sets her apart from other characters, but is she good or not? That's hopefully going to be the question that we answer at the end of this, but go ahead and take a look at her skill set and her skill kit. Her first skill is going to be the Mind's Eye Fake A. This will apply evasion to herself for one turn. This will also increase her own critical strength for three turns. So a pretty solid skill to start off with. She has that built-in evasion, which is definitely going to be very helpful to dodge most Noble Phantasms and big damage turns. Uh, so that'll definitely keep her alive a lot longer. And you do get a 40% increase to critical strength for those three turns. This is on a six turn charge time, which isn't too bad considering the the length of the, the, the skills so that's not too bad right there the overall effect isn't too bad I do think in the future that if she does get like an interlude or a rank up quest that this skill will definitely be looked at and maybe they'll add like one additional effect or something to her kit um, it just seems a little lackluster with the effects but I guess she does make up for it with her second and her third skill considering how many effects they have so for her second skill, she's going to basically debuff the entire enemy team for the most part. Um, she's going to decrease the defense of all of those enemies. She will decrease the critical rate of all of those enemies. She will inflict Noble Phantasm Seal to all of those enemies for one turn. Um, however, she will also heal all of the enemies by a thousand. So that's really not a bad trade-off for what you get with this skill. Um, you get a 20% reduction to the defense, a 30% reduction to the crit rate. Both of those effects do last for three turns. This is also on a six turn charge time, much like her first skill. Um, so you get a lot more out of this one as opposed to the first one. Uh, but this is really nice. You have a lot of debuffs. And like I said, the 1000 HP heal isn't really a big deal. Uh, it's just a one time shot. So that's, that's really inconsequential, honestly. It's really not going to like make you win or lose the fight one way or the other just because you're giving 1000 HP back. Like You can take that out in one attack. So. Uh, it's really not a big deal there, and the NP seal is going to be really big as well. That, that'll be a fantastic thing to have. Definitely combo her off with other characters that do similar things and kind of just lock the enemy team out from using their Noble Phantasm. And then with her second skill being a debuff skill, her third skill is going to be a buff skill, and this will increase the attack of all of your allies for three turns. This will increase buff removal resistance for all allies for one turn, increase the Noble Phantasm gauge for all of your allies, heal all of your allies, however this will also heal the enemy team by another thousand. So once again that heal is really irrelevant, it's not going to make a big difference. Even if you do use both of these skills in the same turn, healing the entire team for 2000 is really not going to make much of a difference, especially if you are setting up for a Noble Phantasm turn where you're just going to do a ton of damage anyway. So really not that big of a deal. You do heal your own team for a thousand as well. so. That's nice, but again, it's not that big of a deal. It could, I guess, it could help you more um, just to keep someone alive. It's definitely better to heal yourself than the enemy because, you know, you're just going to be doing more damage that you could overpower them. But that eight, that 1000 HP might be enough to, to keep you alive for that extra hit. The Noah Phantasm Gauge is going to be really nice. You get a 20% increase for the entire team. So, you know, 20% is kind of the threshold where you, you want to you wanna have it at because that way it combos off with kaleidoscope if that's something that you have if not you know it is still a pretty good boost for your entire team and then you get a 20% increase to your attack this is also on a six turn charge time so 
it's again it's, it's a pretty good skill a pretty good buff and you can combo that on with the second skill which debuffs to your buffs and it's nice now most of these effects do only last for one turn but the the attack boost there is for three turns so that'll be pretty good as for her passives she does have five passives i had to make an entire new graphic just for that because i couldn't fit the fifth one onto the screen uh, but she has the magic resistance a which will increase debuff resistance by 20 percent independent action a which will increase critical strength by 10 percent present concealment a which will increase critical star drop rate by 10 percent Hotel Creation, which will increase Arts Card Effectiveness by 10%, and Ventro... Oh my god, I can't even say it. And Ventriloquism EX, which will apply Skill Seal Immunity to yourself. So I don't really talk about passives that much, but that last passive is really nice, being able to prevent yourself from having your skill sealed. That, that's really, really big. It doesn't happen very often, but the fact of that you are immune to it is really nice. So all in all for Benny Enma's skill kit I am going to give her four stars. I do think she has a pretty nice kit like with the mix between debuffs and buffs. Um, I just think some of the effects aren't really as good as they can be and maybe like the percentages are just a little bit low but overall you know there's really there's nothing too bad with her skill kit. I just don't think that it's anything that is super over the top or or amazing most of it is just like support effects so I can't really give her um, five stars for that because the support effects aren't like amazing like a Merlin or a waiver but they're still pretty solid and you know the debuffs are also really nice there too so yeah overall just a, it's a pretty solid set of skills in my opinion moving on to her command card deck and her command chains and her normal phantasm for her command card deck she has one quick two arts two buster and her hit counts are going to be 6 on the quick, 3 on the arts, 1 on the buster, and 5 on the extra attack. So, you know, she doesn't have the best hit counts in the world, especially on her buster cards, you know, only having that one hit. And her Noble Phantasm generation isn't really that great either, um, so it might be a little difficult to get her Noble Phantasm gauge filled up outside of her skill, but... You know, it, it shouldn't be like super difficult. You know, you do have those two arts cards, so it is definitely possible to to make that work. And as far as the chains go, for damage you're gonna go Buster Arts, Buster Extra. For Noble Phantasm Generation, you're going to have to bring in a different servant's art card, and then both of Betty Emma's arts cards for a 62% increase to your gain. And then for critical stars, you're going to have to bring in a lot of help here with two extra quick cards and then her own quick card for 23 critical stars. As for her normal phantasm, this is going to be a arts normal phantasm and this will deal significant damage to a single enemy and that is the only effect it has for the main effect, but the overcharge effect will apply special attack damage to chaotic and evil enemies for one turn so you'll get a 40 to 60 percent increase if you are attacking one of those two different types of enemies and if you're a type uh, attacking a chaotic evil enemy which there's probably a lot of them you're going to be doing a lot of uh, even more damage because they're separated by effects so if you're going against an enemy that's just chaotic you're going to get the one boost but if you're also going up against an enemy that's just evil you'll get the one boost but if you're going up against an enemy that is both then you will get both of the boosts so you know you're going to be doing a lot of damage especially if you are going up against those two types of enemies so there's some really good potential there to do some really strong damage but it doesn't really have any sort of extra effects it's just damage it's just a damage noble phantasm so speaking about damage her overall ranking for that is going to be four stars her noble phantasm does deliver some really strong damage but outside of that she doesn't really have too much for damage uh, she does have her third skill to increase the attack and her first skill does increase crit strength but overall um, you're not really going to be hitting really hard with this character outside of their noble phantasm so i am going to bring her stats down just a little bit there to those four star rankings as far as her critical ability goes she is going to get three stars she doesn't really offer much as far as crits go outside of her first skill increasing her own critical strength she has average absorption and less than average generation um, and she doesn't have any other skills that really help her in that department she has one quick card or her hit counts are pretty low outside of her quick card 
Uh, so she's really not going to be able to generate stars too well or absorb stars and unless you have like an overabundance of stars using your first skill to do the increase to crit strength probably is going to fall flat because you're not really going to be able to get those crits off because you're not going to have enough stars to crit with. For her Noble Phantasm I am going to give her 4 stars. It's basically just a Noble Phantasm that does damage and yeah it's going to do some really good damage but it has no effects outside of that so I really I, I really can't give it 5 stars just because of that. Um, you know, you're gonna have to have a little bit more in that Noble Phantasm to get a perfect ranking outside of just damage to a single enemy. So yeah, unfortunately because of that it is just gonna get those four stars. For her survivability she is going to get four stars. She has quite a bit as far as survivability goes. She has her first skill which is gonna be a one turn invasion so that'll be really nice to be able to dodge Noble Phantasms or big burst turns from the enemy team. Um, you also have the ability to seal the enemy's Noble Phantasm, so if your first skill is on cooldown, um, you do have the potential to do that to just prevent them from using their Noble Phantasm altogether. So you have a lot of potential there in order to dodge the heavy hits from the enemy team. You also do have that 1000 HP heal for yourself. So all in all, you know, pretty easy to uh, keep her alive. It's definitely not like the top tier level of survivability, but you know, I do think that if you do plan out your skills correctly, you should be able to keep this character alive for quite a while. And then for support, I am going to give her four and a half stars. Um, I don't think she quite gets up to the five star threshold for support, although she does have a lot of really good effects for support, like both in the form of debuffs and buffs. I just don't think they hit the same level of highs as say like a Merlin or a Waver or a Scotty do. Um, but still, really nice, you know, she's definitely up there. She has an attack boost, she has an MP gauge boost, she has a heal, uh, she has a bunch of debuffs as well, which definitely helps support the en or the allies for, for that matter. Um, MP seal, big, I talked about it a lot in this video, MP seal is huge. Um, but she also does heal the enemy team, so I guess I, I guess I could use that as the penalty for not getting a full five star. Um, if, you, if you're healing or buffing the enemy team, then you know you obviously you can't get a full five stars as far as support goes but all in all though she is really nice for that i do wish her null phantasm did have maybe like an extra support effect or two um that might be really nice or maybe her first skill had an additional support effect but either way um she's still a really helpful character as far as support goes so if you are missing out on say you know a merlin or a uh, waver or maybe you're going up against Rider enemies and you don't want to bring in your casters because they're going to get eaten alive, then, you know, this is definitely a good alternative for that. And that will give her overall ranking a 3.9 out of 5. I do think she is a pretty good character. She's definitely going to be a character that I'm going to attempt to pull for, uh, but I don't think she's a must-have character. She's a saber, so she goes up against the likes of, like, a Musashi and an Okita who I do think definitely still rule the the tier as far as sabers go. Um, so it's it's always going to be a tough ask for a saber to come in there and overtop uh, Okida or Musashi. And I don't think Benny Emma quite gets there, but I do think that she is a pretty good alternative if you don't have them. And she is an arts character as well, so even if you want to play it that way, you know, Musashi's Buster, Okida's Quick, you could have Benny Emma in there as your art saber if need be. Um, of course, there's other art sabers out there that are, in my opinion, more usable, I guess. But not everyone has those characters, so they could be a potential slot filler, I guess, in that category. As far as availability goes, Benny Enma is a limited time servant, so you will have to pull for her on a banner in which she's rated up in, and obviously she's out, or she'll be out tomorrow as of this recording, for the New Year's banner, so I do I do firmly believe that um, the first time they come out is the best time to get the character, uh, so definitely if you want to go for that, Tamamo is also rated up on that banner, so you have the potential to get a really good alternative there if you don't get Benny Emma. Um, outside of that though, she does come back in the anniversary lucky bag for this year. Uh, so that'll be a potential to, to get her there. Of course the odds aren't really that good to get any character that you specifically want in a lucky bag. Uh, but she is available in that, so you know that does count. 
And then she will come back again for the New Year's Lucky Bag GSSR for the following year. So in 2022, uh, she'll be available again for that. And then also she'll be ha having her rerun event at the same time next year. Um, but outside of that, that's it. So if you want this character, you're either going to pull for her this New Year's or next New Year's. And I'm sure that before the end of this, well, I guess this year ends in one day. Um, but I'm sure by the end of 2021, she'll probably have another rate up at some point. Um, but for now, that's where it stands. As of this recording, those are the only available banners in which she will make me uh, an appearance for. So um, if you are interested in that character, you'll have to either pull for her this year or pull for her next year. Um, but that's it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I do have the links below to my Twitter, Twitch, Patreon, and Discord. So feel free to check those out. And I'll also leave you guys here with the Noble Phantasm for Benny Emma. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the January 2021 calendar video. <laughs> その2枚下は許しません。つづらの道行き、これにて閉店。